I would like to welcome you to Lecture 7 on the topic of genetics and breeding in agriculture. This lecture is part of the subject Future Farming Technologies, which is a component of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology, a degree offered at both North Melbourne Institute of TAFE and Melbourne Polytechnic. Please visit our website www.nmit.edu.au for information on this subject and other courses that we offer. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. The learning objectives will be similar to that of Lecture 6, where we learn the background so that it will enable us to focus on genetic engineering methodologies and genomics and breeding. The image you saw on the front of the slide was that of a, the vegetable cauliflower and broccoli. These are derived from the same genetic ancestor, Brassica orsia, but were developed over many years into individual and very different vegetables, and this was achieved through selection and breeding. Biotechnology can make this progress more precise and less time consuming. We have learnt in previous lectures, Lecture 6, about the Green Revolution. After the Green Revolution, new technologies which enabled the manipulation of genes, which can allow modification of plant and animal genetics, were developed further. This allowed the improvement of these genetics, and this has the potential to offer significant advances in agriculture. In the lecture here today, we will be learning some of the basics surrounding genomics and genetics. This will help you understand some of the technologies which we will explore in further detail. We will define genetics and breeding and the role that genes play in breeding. We will define the role of genetic mutations. We will look at traditional breeding from a historical and a background perspective. We will touch on plant and animal breeding basics, but we have lectures that explore these independently. We will look at breeding strategies based on genetic manipulation, advantages and disadvantages, and a, a quick talk about the future of genetics. So let us start with the definition, the definition of breeding. Breeding is when you change genetics to improve desirable traits. Breeding has been conducted on both animal and plants. In fact, humans have a very long history of breeding with animals and plants, and this began at the start of human civilization. The breeding of both animal and plants to improve genetic traits is a very desirable characteristic for humans. We do it for many reasons, for food security, to increase economic returns so we can increase yields or economic traits in our crops, to reduce the environmental impact of agriculture, or simply to meet consumer needs and trends. The manipulation of breeding by humans began with plants, and it is estimated that we have been selecting for desirable traits from about 9,000 to 11,000 years ago. Initially, the requirement was to select plants that had desirable food traits. These traits were kept and later enhanced by keeping and harvesting the seeds of these plants. The sophistication of breeding was significantly advanced by the work of Gregor Mendel. Mendel was a, a monk who lived in Germany and he demonstrated that the inheritance of certain traits in pea plants follows certain patterns. This is now referred to as the laws of Mendelian inheritance, and we are going to talk about these in the next couple of slides. So let us have a look at a very simple breeding technique. You select two ideal plants with the desirable traits that you want. The following slide shows a picture of a plant anatomy. You may wish to refer to this to enable you to understand the simple breeding technique. The male parts and the female parts, the anther, the stigma, star and ovary, are components that you need to be familiar with. You remove the stamen of your parent plant. This stops self-pollination. 
just as the stamen starts to open. Using tweezers as you gently rub the fresh cut stamen against the seeds plant stigma, dusting this stigma with pollen. You can gently fold the petals over the stigma as this will give the pollen a chance to fertilise the seed before the wind or an insect may disturb this. <coughs> you give some time and the seeds will set. Once the seeds have set, they will be ready for planting. This is the very simple breeding technique of plants. And one of the first experiments that Mendel did was to cross pea plants. In crossing these pea plants, he observed a number of traits. The traits that he observed were seed shape, seed colour, flower colour, pod shape, pod colour, flower position and plant height. All of these characteristics or phenotypes could be manipulated with the crossing. The figure on the slide shows examples of these differences. For example, the seed shape could either be spherical or dented. The seed colour could either be yellow or green. The flower colour or petal colour could either be purple or white. <coughs> the pod shape could be inflated or constricted. And the pod colour could either be green or yellow. Flower position could be changed as well as stem height. Mendel counted the number of times the trait occurred after each cross. After doing countless numbers of experiments, he discovered or described what he called the three laws of inheritance. This was the law of dominance, the law of segregation, and finally, the law of independent assortment. Mendel was able to describe the pattern of expression by observation before the mechanism was known. That is the role of chromosomes and genes. This was a significant discovery at his time and, are the, and these laws indeed we still use today. In order for us to really understand Mendel's inheritance, we must first deal with some of the terminology. The technologies and terminologies in genetics have evolved greatly and the use of language is very important in the understanding. I'm going to start with the word genotype. The genotype is the genes present in the DNA of an organism. They are usually donated by a pair of letters and this represents one genotype of one trait. You always see a pair of letters due to the mechanism of sexual reproduction. If two letters are the same, the trait is referred to as homozygous. If different letters donate the trait, then it is called heterozygous. Other terms which describe homozygous and heterozygous have been used. For example, a pure genotype is actually a genotype that is homozygous. A hybrid, however, is a genotype that has a heterozygous. The next term I'd like to deal with is phenotype. A phenotype is how the trait is physically expressed in the organism. This is perhaps the easiest of all the terminology for us to understand. For example, the phenotypic characteristic of my carrot is that the carrot is purple. This means that I have genetically modified my carrot to change the colour of the carrot from a traditional orange to a traditional purple and therefore the phenotypic characteristic of this is the colour. Another example of this is described as the dwarf mutation has a reduced internode length as its phenotypic characteristic. What this is saying is that I have genetically modified my plant to reduce the internode length which has resulted in it being smaller. This is the phenotypic characteristic, the reduced internode length. The word alleles describes alternative forms of the same gene. Alleles for a trait are located at corresponding positions on the homozygous chromosome. I've found in the past that this word can cause confusion, so read slowly. The figure on the slide shows the, the genotype, PP. 
The alleles are shown below this. The following slide will show a quiz. I'd like you to grab a pen and paper and have a go at the quiz. This is a learning resource and will help you assess how much you've understood of this lecture so far. Please note this is not assessed, it just helps with your understanding of the basics covered. You need to ensure this understanding so you can facilitate the next stage of learning about genetics. Please pause the lecture now and have a go at the following questions. The answers are highlighted in blue. How did you go? So now that we've understand some of the terminology, let's look at some of Mendel's inheritance. We're going to start with the law of dominance. While Mendel, Mendel was crossing, or reproducing his pea plants, he did this over many generations, and he noticed some interesting patterns. For example, when he crossed tall plants with pure short plants, all of the new plants in the first generation were all tall. He showed and recorded this observation, as in the table. The parent plants, pure tall times pure short, produced all, short, all tall stems. Similarly, when um, pure yellow seeded pea plants were crossed with pure green seeded pea plants, he noticed that all yellow seeds were produced in the F1 generation. The same was true for, the, uh, for other pea traits, such as rounded seeds with wrinkled seeds and axle flowers and terminal flowers. In other words, what Mendel noticed was that when the parent plants had contrasting forms of a trait, tall trait versus a short, or green versus a yellow, etc., the phenotypes of the offspring resembled only one of the parent plants with respect to that trait. This means that one of the alleles is more dominant than the other. One allele is more dominant in a heterozygous cross. The technical definition of the law of do dominance is as in a cross of parents that are pure full contrasting traits, only one form of that trait will appear in the next generation. Offspring that are hybrid for that trait will have only one dominant trait in the phenotype. The following is an exercise to see if you've understood the dominance rule. From Mendel's results, in the table, can you determine which trait is more dominant? For example, the parent's pea plants, the tall stem, was crossed with the short stem. And in the F1 generation, all tall stems were produced. Therefore, what is the dominant trait? Go through all of these examples and identify the dominant traits before you go on to the next slide. You may need to pause the presentation. So here we have the results of the dominant traits for each of the observations that Mendel were calculated. For example, the homozygous tall stem plant was crossed with the homozygous short stem plants and in the first generation or F1 generation all of the plants produced were tall stems. Therefore you can deduce that tall stems are more dominant than short stems. Please check all your answers for the seeds, pod colour, seed shape and flower position. It is the allele that carries the dominance of the trait. In genetics, the trait dominance can be represented by the case of the letter. So when a capital letter or upper case is used, this shows a dominance. When a lower case is used, this shows a recessive characteristic, or less common traits. In the P example, capital T equals tall dominant, while lowercase t equals a recessive. When we look at these alleles, we can see the genetic symbol described. If you have a genetic symbol, uppercase T, uppercase T, what you're actually describing is a homozygous dominant. That is, both alleles are dominant. Where you have a genotype symbol, lowercase t, lowercase t, you are showing that it's a homozygous recessive. That is, that both alleles are recessive. 
A heterozygous, one allele is dominant and one allele is recessive, is shown by a capital T followed by a lowercase t. The following table sums up these symbols and descriptions for your reference. You can see the genetic symbols alongside the, phen alongside the phenotype that is actually exhibited on the plant. It is worth noting that the only way the recessive trait shows up in the phenotype is if, it, is if the genotype has two lowercase letters, i.e. it is homozygous recessive. So in the example of our pea plants, there are two lowercase t's. It is also worth noting that hybrids always show the dominant trait in their phenotype. And this sums up Mendel's law of dominance. The Punnett square. This is a diagram that can be used to predict an outcome of a particular cross or breeding experiment, i.e. it could show and demonstrate Mendel's results. It is used to determine the probability of an offsprings having a particular genotype. Here is an example of a Punnett square demonstrating the phenotype of green and yellow and yellow bananas. The genotypes are described as a capital Y and a lowercase y. The definition of a Punnett square is that the Punnett square is a tabular summary of every possible combination of one material maternal allele with one parental allele for each gene being studied in the cross. Using the Mendel's tool and short p observations we can show the outcomes of the crosses using the Punnett square system. In this example we have a dominant allele homozygous TT parent crossed with a recessive allele parent, that is the recessive allele will show short stems. You can use the following layout of four squares to show this cross. The first task is to place the parent genotype descriptions at the top and to the side of the box. As you can see from this slide, the capital T's are placed above the box and the lowercase recessive T's are placed to the left hand side of the box. As you can see from this slide, the capital T's are placed above the box and the lowercase recessive T's are placed to the left hand side of the box. We can now use this arrangement, or the Punnett square, to fill in all possible combinations of the cross. The theory goes you take one allele from each parent and the two alleles will give you the combination. So, for example, the capital T from the male crossed with the lowercase recessive T from the female will give you a capital T lowercase place T or heterozygous. This phenotype will produce a poor at all plant. I have filled out three of the combinations. Can you fill out the, further com the last combination of the offspring? Try to do this before you continue to the next slide. The last combination to fill in was uppercase T with lowercase t. Uppercase T from the male and lowercase t from the female. This phenotype for the cross will produce all tall plants. We can now use this arrangement, or the Punnett square, to fill in all possible combinations of the cross. The theory goes you take one allele from each parent and the two alleles will give you the combination. So, for example, the capital T from the male crossed with the lowercase recessive T from the female will give you a capital T lower place, place, place T or heterozygous. This phenotype will produce a poor at all plant. I have filled out three of the combinations. Can you fill out the, further com the last combination of the offspring? Try to do this before you continue to the next slide. We can use this Punnett square to investigate other crosses of parents. Let us take a dominant homozygous tall plant 
cross or capital T by T and cross it with a heterozygous plant, capital T, lower case, close T. Again, start by placing the parents above and to the left hand side of the box. Then place all the combinations, combining one allele from the male and one allele from the female. All of the offspring from this cross, F1, will have a mix of dominant homozygous and heterozygous genotype of capital T, lower clase T. This will result in this generation of phenotype from this cross will all be tall plants. In this example, I'd like to cross heterozygous parents. These are parents with a capital T and a lower case T, and they are both the same. Again, start by the basics. Draw the cross and add the male and the female genotypes on the top and the left hand side of the box. Then, taking an allele from each parent, draw the possible combinations. In the first top left hand box, the combinations of the dominant T crossed with the dominant T re result in a dominant homozygous. What you will see from this cross is a mix of dominant homozygous, heterozygous for stem length and recessive for stem length. The phenotypes for this cross will be mixed. That is, some will be tall and some will be short. Most of the plants, three quarters of the population, will be tall plants, but one quarter, or a smaller percentage of the population, will show a short phenotype, described as lowercase t, lowercase t. And this is the basis of genetics and the modern world of genetics used for agriculture. In the next going, couple of slides, I'm going to set some examples for you to work through. For this example of Mendelian inheritance, I'm going to use this illustration of cats. The parent is a white cat and one parent is black. As you can see, the first generation they produce all black cats. In the second generation, there are three black jacks pr cats produced and one white cat. We can use the letters CC to describe the difference between the recessive characteristic and the dominant characteristic. When a capital C is used, the characteristic is a black cat. When a recessive characteristic is seen, or lowercase c, lowercase c, the resultant is a white cat. We can now use the Punnett diagram to explain these crosses. As before, if you put the parents at the top and to the left hand side, you can then work out all the first generations of this combination. Our parents are a recessive cat that's white and a dominant cat which is black. Now that you've worked the parents from the F1 generation, you can put these in the second Punnett square to give you the second generation combination. You will see there is a CC, that is um, a dominant homozygous. Then there are two capital C's, lowercase c's, which are heterozygous and these will be black as a phenotype and there is one lowercase c lowercase c this is a recessive trait and this cat would appear white the following is an exercise that i would like you to all complete before continuing this recorded lecture draw yourself two punnett squares and analyze the following crosses two parents with a capital r lowercase that is a homozygous, are crossed with a dominant heterozygous. The letters stand for the colour in strawberries. The capital R represents the colour red, which is the common colour for strawberries, while the lowercase r represents white. A white colour only appears where there is a recessive characteristic, that is two lowercase red. Complete the first generation, then 
Select the parents from the top and the bottom right hand boxes and fill in the cross below. Once you've filled in the cross, you can then ask, answer the following question. What percentage of the strawberries are white? Please pause this recording before you continue to see the answer. The slide shows you the following Punnett square completed. You will see for the first generation you have heterozygous uh, children or offspring. These will all be demonstrated as the colour red. In the second generation, however, there is a mix. There is one homozygous red, two heterozygous red, and one recessive white plant. Therefore, you will be able to work out the ratio of red plants to white. That is three to one in the second generation. In this section, we are going to learn about the law of segregation. During the forma formation of gametes, an egg or a sperm, the two alleles responsible for a trait separate from, separate from, one e from each other physically. Alleles for a trait are then recombined or put back together at fertilization, thus producing the traits of the offspring. The Punnett square on the slide shows this conceptually. The law of segregation, that is when the gametes are formed, occurs during the process of cell division known as meiosis. You covered this extensively in the subjects Living System 1 and Living Systems 2. Please go back and review your notes for the fundamentals if you require. Meiosis leads to the production of gametes, sex cells, which are either an egg or a sperm. Sometimes the term gametogenesis is used instead of meiosis. In summary, the laws of segregation when crossing heterozygous parents will result in the following percentages of genotypes. A genotype, capital T, lowercase t, by capital T, lowercase t, which represents the two heterozygous parents. The phenotypes of this cross are tall, tall. In the F2, or the second generation, the following will appear. Genotypes, 25% will be dominant, homozygous for tall. 50% will be tall, heterozygous, and 25% will be recessive or small. When you look at the phenotypes, this results in 75% of the plants being tall and 25% being short. The law of independent assortment is defined as the alleles for different traits are distributed to the sex cells or offspring independently of one another. It is the word independently which is important in this particular law, the last law that Mendel described. This law is not as obvious when looking at only one trait. If examined seven traits, such as tall and short, along with seed colour, then these traits were independent from one another. In other words, being tall didn't automatically mean that plants have to have green pods, nor did having green pods mean that they were then filled only with wrinkled seeds. The different traits are independently inherited from each other. The following example demonstrates the law of independent assortment. The genotypes of the parent pea plants will be crossed. Capital R is dominant for round seeds, while lowercase r indicates a recessive allele for wrinkle seeds. Capital G is dominant allele for green pods, while a lowercase g is recessive allele for yellow pods. In the parent cross of this examination, this example, sorry, we have a heterozygous parent for both seed shape and pod colour. 
The image on the slide is a more complicated Punnett square than perhaps you are used to, but the principles are very much the same. You lay the parents out on each axis and then you add together the combinations. You will see from the crosses that indeed that they are independent. It may take you some time to examine this, so please feel free to both stop the lecture here and look at the notes. In the lecture notes, I have given a breakdown of how many combinations of homozygous round, homozygous green you will get, and I have broken it down for each trait characteristic. You will see that there are a total combination of 16 different combinations. So to summarise, in this lecture you should now be able to define and understand some basic history of genetics. You should be able to describe and understand the laws of Mendel inheritance. And finally, you should be able to use a simple Punnett diagram to predict offspring from your crosses. This is the start of any good breeding program. This brings us to the end of this lecture.